very good evening once again my name is Alok Shrivastava and I welcome you to Network Nuts YouTube channel so it's a second video back to back in series for RSC training so yeah in this video I'm going to share you about basic some tips and tricks about the package management the RPM we will be talking about history of yum we will be talking about yum log location and we will be talking about the log rotate for the yum log files but before i proceed if you hadn't subscribed us i request you to please subscribe our channel thank you very much so let's move on to some basics of yum and the rpm so uh, if you have any prior experience with linux or you are doing some training like rsc so you must be aware of the rpm rpm is actually being created by red hat way back in 1998 to take care of the dependencies issues so originally the name was red hat package manager but now it's it's being named as the rpm package manager and it is based on and the yum was actually uh, based on yellow dog updater modified which is a tool a management tool for the rpm to automatically take care of dependencies and all the stops that's good that's very basic stuff so let me just explain you what i have here for you so my machine is already configured as a yum client and the server so i had already copied my whole rel dvd here and I have configured myself as a yum client that's it because I'll be using the locals I'm using a file not any protocol here if I check it by using the yum repo list command to make sure that whether I'm able to access my yum my packages using the yum or not fair enough I'm able to get approximately 4305 packages that's great so let's try to install a package and see how the yum behaves so you know that installation of the packages is being very efficiently handled by yum so if i check it now let's see if i check it rpm query std std is not installed if i give a very simple command yum install std so what it does you see here Apart from the package, if there are any dependencies, Yum will automatically resolve it and will install it for you. So if you see here, first the dependencies were installed and then the actual package was installed reasonably. That's great. So how can I check that which packages are installed? So by default, whenever you uh, install a package or you execute the yum command there is a very interesting yum tool available with you is yum history if I give yum history it tells me that which what I had done with the yum so this is my latest one the current timestamp so I have installed five packages so either you can give yum history or you can give yum history list so you will be notified by what has been done by yum it tells me that five packages were installed but which five packages that is not visible here so if you want to know about a particular id of the yum the event id of the yum say in this case it's five so i can simply give yum history info five so i give here the command yum history info five so that will tell me which packages were actually installed here. fair enough wow that's great so can you see here on some packages I've got at the rate Anaconda mentioned here and on some packages I've got server mentioned here. So I'll just uh, take a few minutes to explain you that. If you see at, at the rate Anaconda against the packages that means those are installed at the time of the installation when you have installed the operating system as Anaconda is your installer. Whereas if you see server, why server in my case? Because I'll show it to you. Because if I show you why server, I'll just show you. If I show you my repo 
file so i had given my repository name server so that's why the server is coming up here so this is matched that means these packages were installed using the yum command using this repository rather than these packages were installed at the time of the installation so it's a very simple way of finding out that which packages were installed at the time of the installation so any package which has got a at the rate anaconda coming up here that means those packages were installed at the time of the operating system installation if any other thing server or local yum or anything that means that was installed using the yum commands so i can get a lot of information about the id yum history info file whatever you you want to do that's great that so that makes sense that what are done so i can also see that what modification has been done so if i say give stdpd is a package so if i give yum history info stdpd so it also tells me that what has been done with this package see here so how many times this package is installed how many times it was removed so see here you can see different time stamps so it was first installed erased sorry at this time 723 it was erased i had done this and initially it was installed at 722 see here it's very interesting so you get a lot of information about a particular package what has what is the history about that particular package what events or how how many times yum has acted on that particular package if i give yum history info httpd so it tells me how many times at 722 i had installed it then see the time stamp here if i move up in the history at 723 i had removed it then again the current time stamp i had installed it so you get to know a lot about a particular package information what has been done that's fine so now the package is installed so if you see here when i had installed it so it installed the package as well as the dependencies this is the current time stamp so it has installed the dependency dep install these are the are the dependencies but so when i remove it it will only remove the package it won't remove the dependency so let me show this to you so package is installed here if i give yum remove stdpd you will see here it's it will only remove the package it's not removing these dependencies that it has installed so might be there might be any use cases where you want to remove the dependencies also so if i just do a yum install or oh i had just installed it so if i give yum I'll go to the top yum history it tells me one package is re is removed there is a very interesting way of undoing it yum history undo and number 6 so see here installing it once again wow that's great so you can do a undo also so that particular command will be reversed see it was erased and it was installed so yum history gives you a lot of information about the package those were installed uninstalled the dependencies so and undo can be do can be used to so if, if i do a yum undo see here five i had installed the package five packages so if i give yum history undo five it will remove the package as well as the dependencies so in case you want to remove the package a particular package not exactly stdpd it can be any package so if you want to, re to remove that package and its dependencies also then you can use this so i, I don't uh, execute it so one a lot of person so yum history can be very useful for you then undo and redo can be used so if i give a yum history say if i do a redo here to 
like redo a particular application yeah say event yum history redo 7 it's already installed that's great do it again so this is a very yum history can be very useful and there is a very interesting uh, uh, like yum history tool that is rollback though it won't be you won't be be like able to see here suppose here you had installed the package you had installed a lot of things so this is you can roll back to a particular point say from 1 to 5 I want to undo everything so you can do this say yum history rollback and 5 whatever number so it's going to remove like go back to the state 5 so where you are currently so you can do a rollback also I'm not doing it I'm just doing it now here so how you can find out that which commands were executed using the yum that I had told you you can use yum history but interestingly yum history is not the only way or the only place to find out that what yum has done or what had been done using the yum commands there is a log also for the yum so that is very important so every time you use yum i'll repeat myself again every time you use yum to install it remove it update it any package it logs into a file where log yum.log so apart from the history this is a very interesting location which normally people don't refer or students don't know so see here it's getting all the timestamps everything what what is been done so if i try to install a package here let's see if i check it out rpm query vsfdbd okay so if i try to remove it yum remove vsfdbd I removed it intentionally so it should be updated in my log file also perfect so using this file you will be able to find out what has been done on your machine See, this is a very important file so it's not and as it's a log file it need to be rotated like normal log file so a lot of people think that they don't want to um, rotate it as var log yum dot log is the only location from where they can find out what happened or what activity has been done by the yum it's it's fine but it's a simple log file so yum history is again one of the ways which gives you a much more detailed information than this log file though i'm not at all saying that this log file is not important it is important but now you've got two ways so either you can use this log file or you can use the yum history command to check what is, is being done by the yum right so so by default what happens so it's always recommended that you should rotate this file so by default this file rotates only when the size exceeds 30 kb so let me check the current size of this file this var log yum dot log if I give a du hyphen hs var log yum dot log, it's 4k. Oh, okay, 4k. Okay, wow, that sounds rhyming. So I can change the behavior of the log rotation of this file. So how can I do it? So if I open the file at c log rotate dot d and yum dot log, see this is the file that controls how it should be rotated so size is 30k which i think is more than enough so i can change it say rotate 1000 or 500 i'll explain you what exactly it is and rotation should be yearly which it is no problem so that means what that the, the file will be rotated when the size exceeds 30k which is more than 30k size is a big size right 
and by default your yum log file is rotated yearly which i have you, you can verify it and that is true it rotates only when the size exceeds 30 kb which is a very huge size as far as the log file is concerned so in physical world practically if it is a physical server then we normally replace this like the server after uh, three or four years might be because of the hardware restraints or the consideration yes but if it is on the cloud or it's virtual then things might be different so if by specifying rotate 500 here what i had like configured it that please keep 500 rotated logs that means logs for next 500 years so it's up to you whether you want to use it or not or change it as per your uh, use case but this file is important so keep a track of, of this file and the logs i'll repeat again will be going under where log yum.com so this file is again very important for seeing the activities done by the yum and one more thing which can be uh, interest for you is the rpm database so rpm database is there see i'll show you it goes under var lib rpm so if i go to var lib rpm this is the location where the rpm keeps its database and it's the current timestamp when the last activity is been done so it's 8 19 coming up here current and now now the time is now the time is it's 8 24 so if i try to do any activity of yum you will see that this these timestamp will change so let me install the ftp once again yum install vs ftpd it's installed where i can expect the changes number one i can expect a change in my log file fair enough it's installed i can expect a change much detailed information is in yum history i can get more information about it by yum history info 9 so ftp has been done I can get more information about a, a particular package yum history info vs ftpd so I get a what has been done on ftpd and then because I just updated it so if, if you see here the time jump changed 25 or 24 approximately so this rpm database is very important for you in the in uh, like next videos i'll try to uh, show you how to take the backup or recover from a corrupted rpm database but not right now not in this video so this video i just intended to show these small small things to get more to dig more into the yum and to get more information from the yum and the places from where you you can get more information about the yum activities so i hope you have liked this video so, and once again before i end it you Chances are that probably you will not find these things in your standard trainings like RSC. So I'm not saying that RSC training is bad. It's very good. It's wonderful training. But the more you learn, the more you earn. So thank you very much. I hope you have liked this video and do subscribe.